Welcome to the Tracker 4 tutorial series. This is one session of many, guiding you through the different settings and utilities of Tracker 4. In this specific video, we will learn how to set up, customize, and manage objects for tracking. When creating an object, there are many elements that may influence how you should place your markers. You must have a minimum of four markers in order to create an object, as four markers will define a rigid body. Considerations should be made so that tracked objects are not self-similar and not similar to other objects. Additionally, considerations should be made for your specific objects, such as marker placements to limit occlusion, balanced marker placements in the case of drones or weight-sensitive objects, and the quantity of objects you have. You may also want to have the marker specify a specific origin, like the object centroid or the origin relative to a CAD model. Here, I have some example objects. These have been set up so that they are not self-similar and they are unique to other objects. As a reminder, here are the general rules and guidelines to creating objects. In order to create an object, we must first enter the tracking tab. This tab may be hidden, in which case it can be shown using the window dropdown in the toolbar. In the Tracking tab, you will see that we have three icons at the top. These allow you to import objects, load tracking configurations, and save tracking configurations. To create a new object, we start with selecting the markers we would like to use. You can either hold the Control key and select each individual marker, or you can hold the Alt key and draw a box around the markers you would like. After selecting our markers, we can specify an object name and click Create. Note that these object names must be unique and can be changed later. Now that we have objects, you can see that an origin has been created for it, as well as a skeleton. The initial object pose will match the orientation of the global axes set when the system was calibrated. While you could enter live review to pause the stream to catch all the markers, this is not recommended as this is a sign that the object will not track well in live. Additionally, if you are in live review, you will not see the object pose until you exit live review. This can make it hard to create multiple objects at one time. We recommend creating your objects in the live stream. If you already have objects that you would like to use, such as those from Tracker 3, you can quite easily import them using the left icon at the top of the tracking panel. This allows you to import any object that exists in a VSK file format. Conversely, to export objects, we can do so through the object management panel, opened by right-clicking the object. You may want to modify your object after creating it. To do so is quite easy. First, we have the ability to add or remove markers on objects. For example, I have placed an additional marker on this robot. To add a marker, in either the tracking panel or the 3D view, select the object. Holding the control key, select the marker you wish to add, and then in the tracking panel, click Add Marker. You can only add one marker at a time. To remove a marker, select the marker, and in the tracking panel, click Remove Marker. Note that you cannot remove markers if it results in the object having fewer than four markers. Notice as well that adding or removing markers does not change the object origin or object orientation. To change the object origin and orientation, we can use the Object Manipulator tool. To activate the Object Manipulator, we must first pause the live stream by entering Review Mode. This can be done either with the Enter Review button or by pressing the spacebar. Once in Review Mode, we select the object in either the 3D view or the Tracking Panel and click the Object Manipulator button in the 3D view. 
Here, we have the ability to change the object origin and orientation, either by dragging these axes and rings in the 3D view, or by entering values in these fields. You also have the option to snap the origin to a selected marker should you want to do so. Note these two icons in the top right of the object manipulator window. These allow you to switch your reference frame from global to local, allowing the manipulator to operate with respect to either the local or the global reference frame. The local reference frame corresponds to the object coordinate system while the global reference frame corresponds to the world reference system. In the case of the local reference frame, you may want to align your axes to markers, centers, or axes. To do so, you can either manually change the rotation of your object's axes, or you can use the alignment tool to specify the alignment of your object's axes. To use the alignment tool, the first thing to do is to set your primary axis. You may set one of three target types, axis, marker, or center. Axis allows you to align the axis of the object to another axis via this drop-down menu. Marker or center allows you to align the axis of the object to one or more markers. Selecting one marker will point the axis to the marker. Selecting two markers will align the axis to the vector between the markers. Note that these markers do not need to be part of your object. In fact, they can be unlabeled reconstructions. Next, you can specify which axis you would like this to be, X, Y, or Z, as well as its direction. We'll repeat this process for the secondary axis, choosing a target type, axis, and direction. Note that if the axis or target in the secondary axis is the same as the primary axis, the Align button is unavailable. Finally, click Align, and your axes will shift based upon your selections. You may want to change some of the properties of your objects or customize them. Selecting your object, we have a few options for properties. First, we can enable or disable the object, which determines if it will be tracked or not. We can also apply a mesh. Included are these four meshes, but you can also add and load your own FBX mesh files for custom meshes. Lastly, you can change the color of the markers and segments for your objects. If we open the advanced settings by clicking the wrench icon, we can see one additional setting for object preset. An object preset is a set of object-specific properties that allow you to control the amount of filtering performed on a given object. This can help to reduce jitter or systematic noise on an object. It can also help ensure that objects are properly recognized. This allows you to set tracking parameters for the object, including filtering and thresholds. You can also create custom object presets for specialized filtering by clicking the Manage button. Here, we can see the preset low, medium, and high object presets, as well as the settings defined in these presets. If I were to create my own object preset, I'd first add a name, select it. Here, I have specific options for my object filtering. Please see our Tracker 4 documentation for specific definitions on what each of these properties does. Objects and their properties are displayed in the tracking panel according to Tracker's autosave behavior. We can manage our objects by right-clicking one or more objects to display a context menu. Here, you can rename, remove, enable, disable, export, 
and set an object as a calibration object. Renaming the object can also be done by double-clicking the object or by pressing F2. Removing the object removes the object from the tracking list. Enable and disable activate or deactivate tracking for the selected object. Export exports the object as a VSK file with the name given to the object. You may have different sets of objects you want to track at given times. For example, a set of ground robots versus a set of drones. You can easily switch between these sets by creating tracking configurations. At the top of the tracking panel, we have the ability to load tracking configurations using the middle icon and save tracking configurations with the right icon. Saving your tracking configuration will save your current list of tracked objects. Loading will allow you to reuse that saved tracking configuration. In conclusion, in this video we have covered key points on how to create objects, modify those objects, manage those objects, and create tracking configurations based upon our objects. As always, if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at Thanks for watching.